Hi everyone, and welcome back to the game room. So I'm going to do something a bit different here on the channel and add a vlog to our lineup. There have been several topics I've wanted to weigh in on as a gamer, and I feel like this channel, small as it is, is an excellent avenue to have some conversations or updates on a variety of topics. Today, I'd like to talk a bit about GameStop which remains the last corporate exclusive brick and mortar seller of video games. I think everyone in the community has been aware of the company's decline in the past few years, and the recent wave of closures has finally hit a specific store I previously hoped had endured it. The GameStop that was once my local Funko Land. And more than that, it was the Funko Land I worked at from 1998 to 2000 as a teenager in high school. I suppose you could say this was kind of the catalyst for my wanting to share a few thoughts on the subject, as my time at Funcoland was, frankly, the best work experience of my young life, and one I still cling to with happy thoughts and some remorse for those days having passed. So let's start with Funcoland, as this is a subject I could probably drone on and on about ad nauseum, as it is actually the inspiration behind my game room and one of the primary factors that cemented my love of video games. I first learned about Funcoland via their printed advertisements in video game magazines. My late father ordered me a game I had obsessed over in my earliest years, that being Metroid for the NES, from one of these advertisements, and I thankfully still have that same cart and cherish it for that. When I was 16, and coming off a short and, to be honest, miserable tenure washing dishes at a local tumbleweed, when I was 15, and for the cash to purchase a Nintendo 64, my father informed me that an actual Funcoland store had cropped up nearby, and suggested I inquire about employment. My dad knew that video games were my passion by this point, and he was correct that this job was practically built for me. And I did just that, and thankfully, amidst an endless sea of eager applicants, I actually landed the job. Funko Land had several similarities to the GameStop everyone knows, and I think by now everyone who was interested in seeing the training video posted by Rad Universe Online has seen it. Let me say this is 100% the training video I remember, and the game's process, and it really was the culture that we had back then. And I think the biggest difference between Funcoland and what it became after its transformation. First, we got commissioned for the items we were asked to push. $2 for every Game Informer subscription and $2.50 for every cleaning kit that we sold. Now, I don't care much about pushing items aggressively. But since Game Informer came with a 10% discount card and the cleaning kits actually extended the warranty, I could live with it. We didn't really push pre-orders, uh, but we encouraged them as a means of securing a copy. Some games were honestly run with such a small print run back then. Uh, there was a lot of financial risk to the publisher and all that. So sometimes this was the only way we ordered some for the store. I recall getting only one or two copies of Misadventures of Tron Bon and Tail Concerto, for example. But we got plenty of copies of Ocarina of Time and WWF Attitude, which was horrible. We were also encouraged to be quite welcoming with the customers. We were expected to be knowledgeable about the game so we could make recommendations or help people find titles they may not know about. Funcoin was also littered with about 10 or so televisions with consoles connected so people could demo the games before they spent the money, just so you didn't fall into the trap of spending money on a terrible game, like WWF Attitude, then only getting in the trade-in credit back when you returned it. Uh, this went for new games too, and we even marked down open demo copies uh, in price if it was the last copy we had. Now, I don't want to spend this entire vlog talking about Funko Land, so allow me to summarize by saying it was a wonderful place to work with, it had a very pro-consumer culture, and it was more than just an era of inexpensive games that we now consider retro. I remember things starting to change around the spring of 2000, and that's when I decided to leave. I had other things going on in my life at the time, such as graduating high school, and I felt like it was the time. 
Do I regret leaving? Sure. But seeing things evolve into GameStop and what they often put their employees through, I still think I made the right decision. Now, some of my friends stayed a bit longer, but eventually our group moved on, and before the game st before long, the GameStop sign was up, and the carpet changed. That that's a long story. GameStop always felt a bit more corporate than Funko Land did. Uh, I observed an increased pressure on game advisors to push pre-orders, sell Game Informer, and cleaning kits. Uh, and eventually, older games and systems were phased out, and the emphasis was starting to get put on newer consoles. Now, contrary to popular belief, there is no real back room in those stores. At my fun Land, there was a desk and some boxes for systems and refurbished systems and, and a bathroom. Everything was up front. So there really wasn't much space for holding on to things. You could also kind of sense a mood shift in the store. Uh, gone were those energetic and peer-to-peer and -peer discussions from the Funko Land era, replaced by stressed out employees being absolutely wrung through the new corporate culture. Now these are just my observations, mind you, from an outside perspective. But as someone familiar with video games retail from that era, these are my thoughts. If you want to hear just how bad it was, there are plenty of videos on YouTube from ex-GameStop employees that are really worth a listen. Suffice to say, I'm not surprised turnover was as high as it was. Now, as a consumer, I felt that GameStop shifted too far away from the ideals of Funko Land, or even when it was Babbage's or Electronics Boutique. Uh, the later of which, latter of which, was also gobbled up and incorporated into this big, massive entity. Rather than having multiple options for shopping, like I did in the 90s, everything was GameStop. My Funko Land was GameStop. The Babbage's in the nearby mall further down the street was now GameStop. And another GameStop even opened in the other mall down the same street. The company was assimilating the competition faster than the creature in the thing. And this meant I had to bow down to GameStop and their policies and practices or go to another retail that wasn't exclusively about video games. There's been a lot of this anti-consumer retail expansion since the turn of the century, and, and that's probably another vlog in itself. Suffice to say, massive acquisitions to create a pseudo-monopoly did not bode well for the customer. Fast forward a bit, and now the video game industry is starting to follow music and movies and provide digital storefronts, and publishers are offering their games digitally. While I personally dislike digital distribution and owning a license rather than, you know, owning a physical game, for a lot of people this is a convenience, and it's enough to sway them away from physical goods despite ownership questions and, you know, not getting a trade-in value or anything like that. You can't resell a license. Aside from the rise of digital goods, GameStop culture was getting toxic. I, I don't blame the employees at all. They, they tried to manage through all of this and didn't have the support and encouragement they needed. They endured uncompromising sales demands, the notorious Circle of Life program, and, and other issues. From a consumer perspective, GameStop had diminished its reputation to the point of gamers seeming actively to avoid it, unless they couldn't. Hell, I remember when Fire Emblem Awakening was coming out, I pre-ordered it, and then when launch day came, I was told that GameStop wouldn't have my reserved copy for another three days, due to Nintendo launching games on a Friday and most publishers opting for the traditional Tuesday. This honestly pushed me to just cancel it and download it from the 3DS eShop. I was upset. I wanted to play my game, and it was so frustrating that it felt like GameStop didn't have its shit together, despite being the premier video game retailer, the only one left standing after all of its acquisitions. I know I'm probably not alone. Basically, what had GameStop done to inspire consumer loyalty and support? I can tell you it sure wasn't selling mobile phones or plastic collectibles that took up precious retail space or taking advantage of their employees. When a new option arose, such as digital distribution, I think a lot of people jumped on it because it meant instant access to your games and not having to deal with the GameStop drama. Look, you can't call a new game new if it's been opened. 
and you can't open games to sell them as pre-owned just because the pre-owned value is higher. It's predatory, it's disgusting, and yet, it happened. In later years, I even had issues with promotions working. There's nothing like ordering some games, taking advantage of a sale or promotion, and then items getting canceled and then losing that promotion or the whole point of it. Or monthly credits as part of their new pro membership that you can only use on specific goods. It just felt like GameStop corporate maybe felt above the consumers rather than appealing to them for their hard-earned cash. And the retro initiative. Oh yes, I have some thoughts on this. For the longest time, seeing GameStop decline and the rise of retro gaming in 2011, I've always argued they should have taken advantage of that trend. GameStop is sitting on the Funko Land name and branding. I argued, to those that listened, why not revive the Funko Land name, which was now kind of legendary to retro gamers, and convert some stores to stock retro games? Take the opportunity to bring back that pro-consumer culture, and as things shifted to digital distribution, you're immune to that loss, as retro gamers are all about that physical good. My poor wife has endured hundreds of hours of my massive revival plans and, and various programs that I felt they could launch to ensure stock recycles or what, let's say you even launch a new magazine called Game Informer Throwback or something. Offer services like replacing save game batteries or console repairs. Even take, even take pride in sorting out counterfeits, which have been rising in the community and ensure that the consumer knows they can relax and enjoy an authentic card or CD. Partner with Limited Run Games and launch official reruns of older games still playable on the original systems. I mean, there are so many possibilities. To be fair, we did get a retro initiative, but boy did they bungle it. I was surprised and happy when the announcement came, which included several points I had argued for, such as save battery replacements and laser lens replacements. Articles arose showcasing staff, checking and repairing systems and games, but, but that was bullshit. And even reproduction carts were flooding their warehouses, further reducing consumer confidence. There were no checks being done during trade-in, which would have spared the company a ton of lost revenue. I'm not sure how this happened, but it felt like they indeed wanted to cash on in, in on the retro craze, but didn't want to invest anything into it. Once again, GameStop further damaged its reputation with consumers. And now, it feels like their retro initiative is an afterthought tucked into the back alleys of its website, and as of this recording, pretty much out of stock. So here we come to 2021, and despite closures to try and reduce cost and enduring a pandemic that launched video game sales through the roof as we all responsibly quarantined and needed things to do, GameStop is closing another 1,000 stores. One of which, I'm sad to say, was the store that was my Funko Land. This one hits me personally hard. Not to mention my feelings go out to the staff that all probably just lost their jobs. There's a little hope on the horizon for GameStop as a whole, with two new prototype stores being tested, one of which seems to be that retro throwback I often spoke about. But I worry if it's not a little too late. Now don't get me wrong, I don't want GameStop to fail. It is so important that we have a dedicated brick and mortar store that's exclusive for video games. If we lose that, then I fear physical ownership isn't gonna be far behind. Until some laws are passed to better clarify consumer rights for digital licenses, having that physical copy is the only way of truly owning it. And we all work pretty damn hard for our spending cash, so I think it's important that our purchases mean something. I hope we see a renewed GameStop emerge from this. I truly do. I remember Funko Land fondly, even now as I approach 40 years old. And I want other teenagers to have that positive work experience in game retail. And I want that experience as a consumer. 
I don't know what the future holds, but I do urge everyone to support retail, small and otherwise, mom and pops, and even corporate. We're all in this together, and we're all gamers. Anyway, these have been the thoughts of a former Funko Land game advisor about the current state of GameStop. As always, thank you for hanging out in the game room, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.